Hi, my name is Jenny. I am the owner of Slay Pilates, located in beautiful Lafayette, Colorado. Today I'm going to be taking you through a workout on the reformer. We're not going to use any props today, no box, no ball, no dowel or magic circle. It's just going to be our bodies and the reformer. So let's go ahead and get started. I have myself set up with three red springs and one blue. That's three heavy and one medium spring. If you know you like something different for footwork, go ahead and self set yourself up however you prefer. We're gonna to come to lying on the carriage, extend our arms down by our side, find that neutral spine. We'll bring the balls of the feet to the foot bar, heels together, toes apart. When you're ready, inhale as you press that carriage out. Exhale, find that resistance and come in slowly. So as we're moving here in this Pilates V position, we want to make sure that we're pressing those heels together, helping to light up the inner thighs. So as you press out, you should feel that zipping up the midline and then release back in. Abdominals are pulling in and up, and we want to make sure here that we're in a nice neutral spine. So your sacrum is heavy, your shoulder blades are heavy, your chest is nice and open to the ceiling, and your skull is heavy in that headrest. We want to move with our breath, inhaling out, exhaling in. You can use that inhale and exhale and the activation of your abdominals to help you power out and then slowly resist in putting on those brakes. Let's do two more here. Last one, come on in. We're gonna separate the heels out so feet are parallel, about a fist width distance between them and move up to your arches. Inhale to press away and exhale to come on in. Now here, we wanna think about that bird on a perch. We have our foot wrapping around the foot bar, toes actively reaching over, heels actively reaching under. So we're getting that nice flexion across the arch as we move here. We also are still gonna feel those inner thighs lighting up. So you wanna feel that scissoring effect. And what we're using that for in this position is we want those knees to be moving along the midline. So as I'm pressing out, my knees aren't falling inward or outward and same as I'm pulling in. One more here. Come on in. We're gonna move up to our heels. You're gonna find an actively flexed foot. Inhale to press out and exhale in. Now with our heels on the foot bar, we wanna make sure we're really grounding those heels in. We're trying to turn on that back chain of energy here. So if you reach your hands down and you feel right where your hamstrings and your glutes meet, those muscles should be super active. As you're flexing your feet, make sure that you're not flexing so much that you're pulling those toes in towards your shins. You're just gonna feel unnecessary pain. So instead, imagine as if there's a wall extending up out of that foot bar and you're just standing flat against it. We'll do two more here. Last one. Come on in. We're gonna separate the feet wide on the foot bar back down to the ball of the foot, find a slight turnout into high heel. Inhale to press away, exhale on in. Maintaining that high heel as you move here. Now with the legs wide, I like to tell people to close your eyes for just a moment and really take a second to body sense into your legs. So we all have a dominant side in life and we wanna make sure that as we're moving here, both of our legs are pushing out with the same amount of work, and then both of the legs are putting on those brakes as we come in. So if you feel that your right or your left might be doing a little bit more work, really try to even that out as you move here. Is your heel high? If it isn't, lift it up a little bit. One more here, come on in. Let's draw our legs into the center of the foot bar. You can either have a fist width distance between or have them right up next to each other. And we're gonna inhale to press out. From here, we're gonna go into heel lower lifts. So I want it to be a slow count. Three, two, one as we lower, and then fire up. Three, two, one, fire up. 
three, two, one, shoot. So as we're moving here, I want you to think about putting the weight of your foot into your first and second toe. So we don't want our feet to be rolling out toward the pinky edge. We want to keep it centralized in toward the midline of the body. One more like this, and then we're going to reverse it. So drop those heels low. Now we're going to come up, two, three, drop. Up, two, three, drop. You should start to feel that burning here. Use your breath to help you move. One more, up, two, three, down. Go ahead and go into running, dropping one heel, lifting the other. Pick up the pace a little bit. Drop both of those heels under the foot bar. Keep those heels reaching under as you begin to bend your knees and slowly close the carriage. Beautiful. We're going to move right into inner thighs. So we're going to extend that right leg out long under the foot bar. Let it rest down on the standing platform for a moment. Bring that left foot up and over to the right side of the foot bar and let it rest parallel. So now our left hip is lifted, shoulders are both down, chest is facing up. We're going to flex into that right foot and turn so that our arch is facing up toward the ceiling. Extend your arms down by your side, curl up real quickly, just make sure that your leg is extending straight out from your body, and then we'll inhale to lift, exhale to lower. So that leg is free floating this entire time. We don't want to rest it down on the standing platform anymore. We're ready to go to work here. Really actively flex that foot so you are reaching that heel toward the wall in front of you. Two more here. Now bring that leg to the midline, keep it flexed. We're going to kick that leg forward, point the toes, press it back. Flex forward, point back. Now as you're moving here, check in with your body. We're fighting to keep those shoulders down. If your shoulders can't rest down flat, don't worry about it. Work toward it. Doing something is better than doing nothing. So keep moving here. The other thing we want to think about is keeping the abdominals pulling in and up as we're moving. So that waist isn't lazy. Our entire body really is active here. If you want a little more in the arms, just press the arms a little bit harder into the carriage. Last one forward and back here. Come to the midline, point the toes, little circles. Doesn't matter which way you start, we're going to go both directions. And breathe. You should be starting to feel it in that inner thigh. If at any point throughout these exercises you need to stop for a minute, go ahead and reverse. Then just stop for a second. Give it a couple seconds, let that burn subside, and then jump right back into it. These ones can be really intense because we just don't work the inner thigh that often. Three, two, one. Keep that leg out and now we're just going to point and flex as we hover that leg out in space. This is the last movement we're doing here. We're almost there. Three, two, one. Go ahead and pull that knee in. Let both of your feet come to the center of the foot bar and then let those knees fall out to the side. So we're stretching the inner thigh slightly. Keep that left knee on the foot bar and bent out and then straighten that right leg. Oh yeah, you can rotate the, heat, the ankle one way and then the other. Draw it back in and let's set up for the other side. We'll extend that left leg out long, let it rest down on the standing platform. Bring the left, or sorry, right foot up and over to the left side, and that foot's going to rest parallel on the foot bar. We're going to fight to open up our chest toward the ceiling, shoulders are heavy, flex into that left foot and turn it so the arch is facing the ceiling. Make sure that your leg is pointing out straight, and when you're ready, inhale to lift and exhale to lower that leg. 
keeping our abdominals pulling in and up in this twist. Really reaching that heel toward the wall in front of you. And breathing. Two more. Last one. Keep that foot flexed. We're going to kick that leg forward, point the toes, draw it back. Flex forward and point back. As you point the toes back, really take that extra moment to reach back as far as you can and you'll feel a nice stretch of your left side body. Now you may notice as we're moving here that you have one side that just feels kind of wonky. Things don't feel right, things aren't as easy. I always joke in classes that you have a unicorn side and you have a donkey side. So this for me is kind of my donkey side. Things feel a little bit less pretty. That's totally fine. Just do the work and you're gonna get the results on both sides. One more here. Come center, point the toes, little circles. We're almost there. And reverse your circles. Really reach those toes, find that length in your left side body as we move here. Bring that leg to stillness and point and flex. Last move here, we're almost there, you got this. Use that breath. Three, two, one. Go ahead and pull that leg in. Let both of the feet come to the middle of the foot bar. Drop the knees out wide. You can rock side to side a little bit. Extend that left leg out long. Oh, nice. We'll draw that leg back in. And let's go into a little bit of bridging here. I like to warm up the spine early on in the workout. So let's start with our feet about hip width distance apart, a little wider, and we're gonna be on the high arch, so right down below the ball of the foot. Arms are gonna extend by your side and we're gonna go into pelvic lifts or bridging. So we're gonna tilt that pelvis in, begin to round up one vertebrae at a time, coming up to that high bridge, squeeze into those glutes, and then exhale as you begin to melt down. Again, one vertebrae at a time, all the way down until your sacrum's heavy, and then you can start again. So we're pulling the pelvic floor up, rounding up, coming tall. As you come into that high bridge, remember that a Pilates bridge and a yoga bridge are very different. So with yoga, as you come up into that bridge, you're really pressing those ribs out, flaring them open, melting that chest open. In Pilates, we keep those ribs knitting together. So abdominals are pulling in and up. You feel that corseted effect where your waist is growing smaller instead of bigger. Come on up, squeeze into those glutes, and then melt. Last one here, as we begin to round up, on up to that bridge, feel that length right here, pause. Reach your fingertips toward the foot bar. Feel energy shooting out your knees straight in front of you and then begin to melt down. Beautiful. Once we come to a heavy sacrum here, I'm gonna have you bring your feet together. We're gonna stay on that high bridge of the foot Feet or arms are gonna come down to your side. This time we're gonna take the articulation out. So we're just gonna press those hips up to the ceiling and lower down. If it's uncomfortable for you in your lower back to have your feet all the way together, separate them about a hip width distance apart. On this next one, we're gonna add on. You're gonna press your hips up, pause, open those knees, close those knees, and lower. Now, as we're opening and closing the knees, Imagine you're moving through quicksand. So we're really adding on extra resistance here. If you're at home and you have exercise loops, you can always put them on during this exercise. It really turns up the heat. But if not, you're totally fine. Just create 
that exist, excuse me, <laughs> resistance. Opening and closing and up, open and close. Let's do one more. Press up, open and close. Lovely, lower down. Now we're gonna bring our feet back to Pilates V, heels together, toes apart. Options here, you can either rest the outside of your low arch on the foot bar or come up onto your heels on the foot bar. I'm gonna go on my heels. In that Pilates V, my knees are wide, I'm gonna inhale to press up and exhale down. Squeeze into those glutes to come up as high as I can before lowering. Now, if you want, you can touch all the way down, say from heavy to the carriage before you press up again, or you can come down and just hover an inch or so off and then lift and lower. Should be feeling your inner thighs, your glutes, your hammies. Let's do one more here. Lower on down, nice. We're gonna take it into a little single glute work. So this is where I love to find that extra burn. Let's start with our left foot on the foot bar and you're gonna be in that high arch just below the ball foot. We're gonna point our right toes and then just gingerly let those toes touch down onto the foot bar. Arms are lengthened by your side from here. We inhale to push the hips up high, exhale to lower. You can look at your hips here and make sure that they're nice and even. As far as weight distribution goes here, you should have like 98% of the work happening in that left leg and that right toe is just gingerly touching down. So you should really be feeling the burn right about now in that glute. Let's do two more. And last one. Come on down. For just a second, let's lift that left ankle over the right knee and open up into a figure four. If you need more, you can gently press on the quad. You don't want to press on the knee to open that leg out more. Let's unwrap that leg and now we'll take it over to the right side. So high arch of the right foot, point the left toes, let them just touch the foot bar when you're ready. Inhale to lift, exhale to lower. Now one thing I should mention, and I'm assuming that most people who are following along on YouTube probably know this by now, but if not, this is vitally important. If you like to have your head rest up while you're working, that is great. But anytime you're doing any bridging, that headrest has to be down. It is so important for your neck and for keeping that length in the spine to have that headrest down. So note to self, if that's not something you've heard before, log it away, very important. Two more here, last one. Come on down. Let's, for a second, just do something that's gonna feel good. Take those legs wide, come back down to the ball of the foot, find that high heel. Let's round our spine up to a bridge, hold there, and then press out and pull in. Pressing the legs straight, and then bending to close the carriage. Keep those hips nice and even as you're moving here. Keep those ribs knitting in toward each other. I don't know why this one feels so good after the rest of it. Let's do two more. Last one. Come on in. Melt the spine down. Let's pull our knees into our chest and just rock side to side for a moment. When you're ready, carefully sit yourself on up. And let's drop a few springs here. Let's drop down to one red and one blue spring. We're gonna be working supine arms. If you know that a red and a blue tends to be a little bit heavy for you, go with a red and a yellow. We'll come back down to lying, and you're gonna reach back behind you and grab onto your short straps. Legs are gonna float up to tabletop. Once your arms are in the short straps, press forward gently so that wrists are tracking right over the shoulders. From here, we're gonna inhale to lower those palms down toward the carriage on either side of the body, exhale to lift. Inhale and lower, exhale to lift. As you're lifting those arms back up, remember we wanna resist those springs. So slow it down a little bit. Hold the abdominals in and up, use it. 
to help you put on the brakes. Another thing to think about here is alignment. We stop where the wrists are over the shoulders. We don't want to take those wrists back closer over the head because it's just unnecessary strain into the shoulder. Let's add our legs. Float those arms up to the ceiling. When you do, extend your legs out long over the foot bar. Imprint the lower spine. Now as we press the arms down, the knees pull in. As the arms float up, the legs extend. So kind of opposite of what you're used to doing. Really important to keep that lower spine pulling toward the carriage. So if you find that you feel any arching where you're in that neutral spine, take your legs up a little higher toward the ceiling. As you get stronger, you'll have that option to lower your legs lower down toward the foot bar. Let's do two more. Last one here. Legs come back to tabletop, arms slid up. We're gonna take this into a hundred. So curl the head, neck, and shoulders as you press the hands down. Extend the legs out long. Instead of moving the arms, we're gonna lift the legs up to the ceiling and lower them down. Inhale as you lower. Strong exhale as you lift. Lower back is imprinted as you're moving here. You should be looking in towards your inner thighs Pressing your hands into those straps to help you get more lift. I want you to think about as we're in this position, your head should be resting on top of your neck. So if my head is back slightly, I'm going to feel a lot of strain in my neck. If I keep my head resting right on top of that neck, it's gone. So really fight for that. One more lower and lift and then go ahead and bend back. Feet can come to the foot bar for just a moment. We're gonna set up for our T-straps next. So arms go out to the side, legs float back up to tabletop, press gently into those straps to come to that T where shoulder and wrist are in alignment. From here, inhale as you pull the palms in toward the hips, exhale to lengthen the arms out. Again, feeling those muscles under the armpit contracting as you pull in, and then slowly resisting those springs as you open back up to T. One more like this, and then let's add on the legs. We'll pull in, extend out to T, pause. Extend those legs out long, imprinting the lower spine. As the palms pull in, the knees pull in. As the arms lengthen out, the legs lengthen out. Really find that length, reach those toes toward where the wall and the ceiling meet in front of you. Two more. Last one. Come into tabletop, arms are gonna stay extended by your side. Turn your palms so that they're facing down. Curl the head, neck, and shoulder up and extend those legs out. We're in the 100 position again. This time we're gonna go into a jumping jack. So we're gonna open the arms and legs about as wide as the foot bar, close them in. Open and close. Reaching those hands into the straps, curling up a little bit higher, pointing those toes. Your legs are reaching away from where your abdominals are pulling up and in. So find that opposition. One more. Go ahead and come on in, rest down for just a moment. Let your arms hang out to that T position. Find opening across your chest and then let's windshield wiper the legs side to side. If you're lucky here, you're gonna get a little adjustment, which is always nice. Oh. We'll set up for our last bit of arms here. So let's float the fingertips up toward the ceiling. Legs are at tabletop. Now press those arms down to hover at about hip height. We're gonna inhale as we bend the elbows, fingertips go up to the ceiling. Exhale to press the arms long, going into tricep extensions. Now I instructed you to keep that arm hovering up off the carriage an inch or two, but if you need a little bit more stability, go ahead and lower that upper arm down against the carriage and keep it firmly pressing in place there. 
Now, if you want to add on legs here, the next time you press, extend your left leg long, pull it in. Right leg, and in. Left, in. Right, in. Keep moving here. One more left, one more right. Last one here. Draw the knees in, straighten those arms out. Last hundred variation, curl the head, neck, and shoulders. Extend the legs out long. Lower back is imprinted. We're gonna slowly lift the fingertips up to knee height and then lower. Lift and lower. Inhaling and exhaling. Pressing those legs actively together so inner thighs are lighting up. Two more. Last one. Go ahead and rest back. Let's hang up those straps. One more time. Arms come out to that wide T. Let them be heavy. Drop your knees to the right and look to the left. And just breathe here. Drop your knees to the left and look to the right. Hmm. When you're ready, draw back to the center and let's go ahead and sit ourselves on up. I'm gonna have you drop your blue spring so we have just one red. So in the case that you were doing a red and a yellow before, drop the yellow, we want one red spring. We're gonna to turn to face the back of the reformer. Legs are gonna extend out between the shoulder rest into the head rest. And then you're gonna grab on to the short straps. Sit yourself up nice and tall. Shoulders are rolled down the back. You're looking straight ahead of you. Palms are facing behind you and arms are gonna lengthen out on either side of the carriage. Inhale to press back. Exhale to release the arms forward. Inhale back and exhale. Really firmly pressing those sits bones into the carriage below you and thinking of that nice long line from your sits bones up out the crown of your head. Using those triceps as you press back and just hold for a millisecond before releasing. The next time we press back, press back and hold and breathe. We're going to look right, look center, look left, look center, and release. And let's go back to pressing. One more time, press back and hold, breathe. This time, look left, look center, look right, look center, and release those arms. Go ahead and just hinge back a little bit. Get that tiny bit of traction and then come up tall. You can hang up your straps on the shoulder rest for just a moment. I want you to reach behind you, place one blue spring and take the red off. Once you're there, we're gonna grab a hold of the short straps once again. We're going to do a variation of rowing here or a moder modification maybe. So we're going to bring the backs of our fists toward our chest so we can make that thumbs down motion right in front of us. Sit up nice and tall to start. You're gonna inhale as you curl that pelvis toward the belly button and round back halfway in space. So find that spot where you can really work those abdominals. From here, we're gonna pull the fists in toward the chest, lengthen the arms straight out, press them out to the sides, Come back center and pull them in, all while keeping that deep scoop of the abdominals and rounding back halfway in space. Make sure that you're not shrugging your shoulders up into your ears at any point. Last one here. As the arms press out to the sides, hold, and we're gonna bank like an airplane, dropping the right fist, lifting the left, come back center. Drop left, lift right, center. Other side, center. 
center. One more each side, dropping right, dropping left. Come center, bring those arms together in front of you and round yourself up. Let's go ahead and just let the head dive toward the knees, reach for the feet and stretch forward. Stack that spine up tall. We're gonna keep a hold of the short straps and we're gonna change it up a little bit this time. Now we're gonna do our hinge back. So arms are gonna come up to a 90 degree angle. Elbows are facing forward, palms facing back towards you. Sit up nice and tall. Maintain this 90 degree angle as you inhale to hinge back in space. Exhale to sit tall. Keep that spine nice and straight as you move here. Use that strong exhale to sit up tall. Now let's add on. So we'll hinge back, come up, small pumps, times two, hinge back, sit up, pump, pump, reaching those fingertips up toward the ceiling and drawing back down. And then hinge back, hinge forward. You should start to feel that burn in the shoulders. Last set here. Go ahead and come on up. Let's take the hands outside the carriage again, palms face back. Press those hands back, dive the head forward. Interlace the fingertips and press those arms back and up. Pull that belly button back toward the spine and just hold here and breathe. You're going to release your fingers and then slowly with control, circle those arms around toward the feet. And again here, you can grab onto your feet. Just enjoy that stretch and then stack yourself up tall. So now I'm going to have a couple options for you. We're going to come to kneeling. If this position feels dangerous and out of control, then just sit back on your heels. If this is not something you can do, you can flatten those feet. So I'm gonna come up to kneeling on my knees. My quads are up against the shoulder rest, and then I'm going to tuck those toes under. So from here, I'm gonna bring the top part of my arm in close to my body. I'm really squeezing in. And then I open these arms out slightly, so it kind of looks like a W. I'm gonna inhale as I press the arms up and out, Exhale to draw them back in. All these movements should be done very slow and controlled. My abdominals are super active. I'm squeezing into my glutes. I'm making sure that as my pinkies press up toward the ceiling, my shoulders are rolling down the back. Now let's add on, we'll press the arms out, pull them in, really squeeze that arm in close to the body, slowly bring your fingertips together to touch, slowly open them out, press out, draw in. So we're finding that resistance we've talked about a few times. As my fingertips come into the midline to touch, I'm moving them through that imaginary quicksand. Last one here. Nice. Let's go ahead, cross the right strap over the left. And now you can walk your hands up the ropes a little bit and hold above your knot or your silver clip if it feels better. So from here, nice and tall, we're gonna lengthen the arms out in front of us and we're gonna pull those elbows back and up and release forward. As we do that, we're bringing those shoulder blades together on the back. Something you want to think about here is as you're pulling, look down at your arm. You want to see a nice long line from the tip of your elbow out your knuckles. So we're not bending that wrist and breaking at that wrist. 
Think about pinching that pencil in between your shoulder blades and releasing. One more here. Go ahead and release your arms forward. Sit back on your heels. We'll hang up those straps and then we're going to go ahead and come on off of the carriage. Let's step off to the right side of the reformer if you're facing the foot bar. We're going to stay on one blue spring. We're going to go into some lunging. So there are options here. Let's step that right foot up close toward the foot bar and close in toward the reformer. Left foot comes up into the shoulder rest. So we'll start easy. We're going to hover that left knee up off the carriage. Hands come to the foot bar. And we'll just inhale as we press back into a low lunge. Exhale to come in. Weight of your body is in that right heel. You're thinking of that nice long spine. So you're looking out a couple of feet in front of you at the floor. And just move in and out of this lunge here. If you want more, come on in. Stand up tall. Arms can be at your side. They can be behind your sacrum. They can be in prayer. And we'll just inhale back and exhale in. So this is kind of that next tier if you want a little bit more. Do a few here. If you still want more, come up tall, arms by your side. Inhale to press back, hinging forward slightly, arms hold up by the ears, and then exhale to draw in, dropping the arms. And if you're doing this, rendition as you stretch out reach those fingertips in opposition of where your toes are pressing into the carriage make sure that weight is still in that right heel we want to keep this work in the glute and keep it out of the quad as much as possible let's do two more last one Come on in, hands come down to the foot bar. Let that left knee be heavy. And now we'll just stretch down into a nice deep lunge that can just be more of a stretch. So enjoy the opening through the left hip flexor. You can straighten and bend that right leg if it feels good. You can pull in and press out whatever you need here. Let's pull the carriage in, and before we walk around to the other side, we're gonna add on some scooters, and we're gonna do it in a pyramid. So let's start with one red and one blue spring. Set up for scooters a little different, left foot against the shoulder rest. Step that right foot back and bend into that right knee. We wanna line up these knees. Hands come to the foot bar, and then think of that long spine. From here, when you're ready, we're gonna kick out and in. We're gonna do eight with this red and this blue spring. We're going to take off the blue and add a yellow. So one red, one yellow. Now we're going to do 10. Make sure that your body is staying still. Your hips are pointing forward. Take off the yellow spring, and now we're going to do 12 on one red. Take note of my form here. My chin isn't tucked. I'm not looking back at my knees. My chin isn't lifted. I'm not looking ahead of me. I have a nice, long spine. Two more. Last one, go ahead and pull it in. Sit on down, take that left ankle across the right knee and then hinge forward slightly. You can bend and flex, hit that left ankle. Sit on up tall, let's walk around to the other side and we'll first Keep that, oh, actually drop down to one blue. So we're going to set up for our lunges. Take that right off. So left foot steps up toward the foot bar, hand toward the reformer. Right foot into the shoulder rest. 
We'll start with our hands on the foot bar like we did last time. Weight is heavy in the left heel. Inhale to lunge out. Exhale to come in. Trying to find that nice deep lunge. You should feel a really nice opening and stretch into your right hip flexor as you lunge back. Now let's add on. So if you wanted to come up to standing, find whatever position you're comfortable in and we'll lunge out and in. Again, making sure that those hips are staying facing forward and that the weight is staying heavy in the left heel. Now if you still want more, arms drop by the side. Inhale as you hinge forward slightly, arms up by the ears. Exhale to stand tall. Two more. Last one here. Go ahead and come on in. Hands come down to that foot bar and stretch back into that yummy stretch lunge. You can bend and straighten the left leg. Oh, that is glorious. Come on in, let's add on that red spring. So one red, one blue, and we'll set up for our scooters. Right foot stays back, we walk the left foot back so that those knees can be lined up Hands on the foot bar, long spine. When you're ready, we do eight with this red and this blue. Seven and eight. Pull the carriage in, drop the blue, add a yellow. One red, one yellow, we'll do 10 here. Two more, 11, 12, pull the carriage in, turn around, sit on down, we're gonna cross that right ankle over the left knee, hinge forward slightly. If you need to press this leg open, you can do it with your right forearm, just make sure that you're pressing on the quad part of the leg, not on the knee, and then point and flex that right foot. Go ahead and untwist yourself. Let's add that blue back on. We're gonna go into a little knee stretch here. So come onto the carriage, feet are gonna come up against the shoulder rest. Hands will come down onto the foot bar. We're gonna find that Halloween cat back. So I'm pulling my navel to my spine, deep scoop. Once you're there, sit your sits bones back towards your heels. So they're just hovering a couple inches up off. Top part of our body is going to stay completely stable. You're going to inhale as you press away from the hips. Exhale as you slowly draw your knees back under the body. Inhale away and exhale. What we want to focus here on um, knee stretch round, which is the round back that it's referring to, is that we press away and then we slow it down on the way in. Press out for one, one, two, three to close. One, one, two, three. Abdominals are super active throughout this entire exercise. Let's do one more. Out. One, two, three, in. Go ahead and come in for a moment. Now we're going to do knee stretch flat with a flat back. So find that neutral spine, which will feel like you're sticking your booty out compared to what we just did. Once you have your nice, long, neutral spine, 
Sit the sits bones back toward the heels again. We're keeping the top part of the body totally stable once more. When you're ready, inhale out, exhale in. Again, out for one, one, two, three, in. Out, one, two, three, in. Inhale, slow exhale to resist the springs. As you're moving here, think about scissoring those inner thighs in toward each other. The next time we do this and I have a prop, we'll place a ball in between the legs above the knees, just so you can really feel that connection. One more. Beautiful, pull the carriage in. Feet can come in between the shoulder rest and then stretch back into a child's pose. Let the arms be up high on the foot bar. Let the chest melt down toward the mat below you. One more thing here before we begin our stretch. Let's come to sitting sideways. Um, my right leg is up against my right shoulder rest. I'm going to sit crisscross. I'm going to reach down once I'm in position and I'm going to drop to one high yellow spring. So if you bend back a little bit, you can see that second row of buttons. Put your yellow on that higher level of buttons and then grab onto the short strap with your left hand. We're going to sit up nice and tall. Right hand can just rest down by your side and we're going to go into a bow and arrow. Pulling that left elbow across the body, opening up toward the foot bar, and then releasing back the same way we came. Allow your gaze to follow your fist as you move. Think of that long spine from sits bones out the crown of the head. On this next one, open that arm off to the side, pause there, extend your right arm out, we're going to inhale as we twist toward the back of the reformer. Strong exhale to come back center. Inhale. Strong exhale. Getting into our obliques here. One more. And close that arm back. We'll hang up that strap. And let's carefully, because you're on a very light spring, turn around and face the other direction. Still in crisscross. Let's actually switch our crisscross so that it's the, the way that we don't normally sit crisscross. Go ahead and grab onto your short strap with your right hand. Sit up nice and tall. Left arm can lengthen by the side. And we'll go into our bow and arrow, allowing your gaze to follow your fist as it moves. Anytime you're working with a yellow spring, make sure that you really slow down your movement. You take your time. We're using this light spring on purpose. We do a few more reps, but it's just a little bit gentler on the shoulder. On this next one, extend that arm out, hold. Extend your left arm out. We're gonna inhale as we twist toward the back of the carriage. Strong exhale to come center. Inhale, twist. Exhale to come back. One more. And release that back. Now really fast, let me address something because that can, that movement, the twist can be really hard for some people. So if we get to that part and you're like, no way in heck is this happening. Just quickly reach down, add on a blue, take off that yellow. You can bring your hands to the center of your chest, clasping your hands together, and you can just twist toward the foot bar. You're still going to get work here. You're still going to work those obliques. It's just a little bit gentler. So that's another option there. So let's go ahead. You guys did great today. Let's set up for feet and straps. So one red, one blue. Come on down to lying. Reach behind you. Grab onto your long straps and we'll get them on the bottom of our feet. Once you're there, heavy sacrum, neutral spine, arms lengthen by your side. Legs float up to the ceiling. Inhale to press them down over the foot bar. Exhale to lift. Keeping the sacrum heavy through the entire movement. 
and making sure that you don't lower the legs too far. We want to stop them where they're just above that foot bar. If we take them down too far, you can get arching into the lower spine. We don't want that. Make sure the legs are pressing gently together as you're moving. So we're still keeping that inner thigh connection. Make sure the shoulder blades are heavy, the chest is nice and open. Relax your facial muscles, relax your neck muscles. Last one here, press those legs down. Now bring heels together, toes apart, and we'll bend the knees in toward the chest. Shifting into frog, press the legs out, exhale them in. Inhale out and exhale. Keeping those heels pressing firmly together. Feeling that zipping up the midline as the legs extend out long. Keeping the spine neutral. Two more. Last one. Pull the knees in. Let's bring the feet back to Parallel, bring the knees in toward each other, extend the legs up, and we'll go into leg circles, pressing the legs down, opening them out around and drawing them back up to the ceiling. What I like to do in leg circles is place my hands on my hips. So even though the leg is making this huge circle, we want that pelvis to stay stable, and we don't want the pelvic bone to tilt in toward the belly button. So if I keep my hands on my hips, I can keep myself a little more honest. One more this direction. When the legs come up to the ceiling, let's reverse, open them out, press them down toward that foot bar, draw them together and lift up. Again, I'm gonna keep my hands on my hips. Now with any of these movements, don't ever compare yourself to what I am doing. I practice this literally every single day of my life. And I, even I have my weaknesses. I have a spine that is, I mean, it's almost as if it is fused, even though it is not. I have a sacrum that's a funny shape that gets in my way with some movements. So you just need to be in your body. You're doing this for you. You're doing this for your health, for your mental health. And you just need to give this time to yourself. Draw those legs up. And now let's go ahead, grab a hold of the ropes and pull gently, pulling those legs in closer to your body. Now you can let that sacrum float up a little bit, stretching deeper into the hamstrings. Now let those legs fall out to a wide V and you can rock side to side, massaging the lower back. Carefully draw those legs together, bend your knees. We'll take off those straps, hang them up. You guys did really, really great today. Thank you so much for working out with me and I hope to see you soon.